My name is Jason Grout. I'm at Bloomberg, and I'm here to talk about Jupyter Lab, which is the next generation of the Jupyter uh, web interface. I'll just mention that there's a few people here on the right-hand side. This is some of the major contributors to Jupyter Lab, but there are also uh, many more. Uh, so first, the classic notebook. Since its uh, launch a couple of years ago, uh, it's grown to be the de facto platform for doing interactive data science and sharing your results with others. Uh, one of the nice things about the classic Jupyter Notebook is that it lets you uh, combine rich output, code input, as well as narrative text, including mathematics. Uh, how many people here have used the Jupyter Notebook? Okay, if you didn't raise your hand, turn to the person next to you, it looks like, and they can fill you in. But one of the things we've noticed about the Jupyter Notebook is that people need many more tools for their workflow. And so the Jupyter Notebook's grown a few other components, for example, a terminal, a text editor, a file browser, et cetera. Each of these components helps us in our workflow, but they're still sort of distinct things. And one of the things that Jupyter Lab does is it brings all those components together into a single unified platform. So this is an example of Jupyter Lab. You have your notebook on the top, an editor, uh, a view of an output cell, and a file browser off to the left-hand side, uh, plus a few other tabs across the top that you'll see. Uh, to give a little bit of background about Jupyter Lab, it's been in development for about three years. Many contributors, uh, some working on it full time, many from the community as well. Many uh, releases because we have six. We've broken up Jupyter Lab into many different components, and each component has its own release. Uh, but to give you an idea, it's about 12,000 commits, which is about the same amount of uh, commits as the classic notebook. So we've gone come quite far in the last three years with Jupyter Lab, and just in the last month or so, we released what we call Jupyter Lab Beta, which really means user 1.0. It's ready for daily use. Uh, the extension developer API is still evolving, and so that's why we call it beta. But it's ready for uh, daily use. You can install it with Conda uh, or install it with PIP. The takeaway from this slide is that you should really go check it out today. Um, and just as a, uh, an aside, if you're interested in the Jupyter ecosystem and learning more about the Jupyter ecosystem and rubbing shoulders with more people using Jupyter, uh, please come to JupyterCon August 21st through 25th uh, in New York City. And especially, we'd love to see you on the Saturday, the free Jupyter Community Sprint Day, uh, August 25th. So let's see what Jupyter Lab looks like. So this is Jupyter Lab. Uh, let me make sure that. Looking for a thumbs up on uh, if, if it's big enough for you to see. Is it good? OK. Um, so here's Jupyter Lab. You can create a new tab by either clicking a plus or uh, file new. You can create a new notebook. You can create a console, which is like the IPython console in the terminal. You can create a terminal, a full functioning terminal, or a text editor. Um, let's look at notebooks first. So here's an example notebook from Jake Vanderplas's Data Science Handbook. Um, this is the same notebook interface that we know and love, same notebook files that we know and love, uh, but completely new implementation of the, of the viewer. And so you can see that it works. For example, shift enter is executing things and I'm, I'm evaluating the code. Uh, but we've taken some uh, time to implement a few features that people have been wanting for a while now since we have a brand new implementation of this. Uh, for example, you can collapse code cells inputs or outputs. You can drag code cells around to move them, et cetera, and drag it back if you'd like. Um, you can even open up a new version, a new view of this document here, and so that it's easy to uh, drag it over to the side. So now you have two side-by-side -side notebooks, and now it's easy for me to see two parts of the notebook at the same time. In fact, dragging also works between documents, and if I drag it between two documents, it copies the cells. So you can have a template notebook and just copy cells into another notebook if you'd like. Um, but it's more than just uh, having components side by side. One of the things that bringing the components under a single platform does is it lets us uh, have components that interact with each other. So for example, I can open up a new console for this notebook. What it does is it opens up a console that's attached to the exact same kernel as this notebook is. And you, now you see as I evaluate code in the notebook, you'll see a log appearing in the console of exactly what code I've evaluated. This is nice. The log on the, in the console is immutable. It tells me exactly what code I evaluated and what order I evaluated it. And it also allows me to play around in this kernel without messing up my notebook. I can investigate things outside of sort of my document. And I have two tools here then talking to the same kernel. This is the sort of functionality that JupyterLab enables, the tools integrated and worked, working together. 
Um, here's another notebook demonstrating the Jupyter Widgets ecosystem. Uh, the Jupyter Widgets is a powerful system for doing interactive, uh, sort of dashboardy like uh, uh, computations. So here I drag a slider and it's recomputing uh, the solution to the Lorentz equations. Uh, but it, just as I can have two components talking to each other, it's easy for me to split components out. So for example, I can create a new view for this output and I can even overlay it on top of this. And now I have sort of a prototypical dashboard talking to the same kernel, just another view of this output of this cell. So that's a notebook. Uh, the same interface you know and love, same files that you know and love. Uh, but more powerful and integrated into the JupyterLab environment. So let's look at the editor. So here's a markdown file, for example. And uh, with any sort of document in JupyterLab, uh, we can have multiple viewers. So for example, I can show the markdown preview for this file and put it to the side. And this is actually a live uh, preview. They're both viewers are talking to the same underlying model. You can see, you know, there's a live pre preview. Oops preview for the, uh, for the uh, markdown. Um, but just like the notebook, I, it, the powerful thing in Jupyter is being able to hook up to kernels. And so you see I have some code blocks here. I'm going to create a console for this editor. I get to pick whatever kernel I want, probably the language that I'm writing in my markdown document. And now if I press shift enter inside this code cell, uh, this code block, it sends it to the console over uh, in the bottom right. And I can keep going through the code blocks, it automatically sends the entire code block here. And it's very easy for me to check my examples here. Uh, here again, I have a markdown file and a view of the markdown file, and I can execute from the markdown file. This is also really powerful if you, instead of having markdown files, you have uh, code files. Uh, the code files then, uh, uh, you can check each line of the code file as you go through. You can see that uh, things get pretty crammed, so you can also uh, go to single document mode to blow up one part of the JupyterLab interface, and you can also collapse it back down to go to your full layout. Um, we deal with many, many different kinds of file types inside of, Ju inside of our workflows. Uh, so JupyterLab has a number of viewers for different kinds of files. So for example, images or uh, uh, PDF files, for example. Uh, it can deal with uh, even GeoJSON files, so here's a live map. Uh, it can deal with uh, all sorts of files, including CSV files. One of the biggest data formats that we deal with these days uh, is CSV files. This is a, a grid renderer that's a high performance grid renderer uh, written by Chris Colbert as part of the underlying PhosphorJS library upon which JupyterLab is built as part of the JupyterLab co collaboration. Uh, but it does more than just open up small CSV files here. Here's a 200 megabyte file, uh, 1.2 million rows. Uh, Excel and LibreOffice can't open it, it's too big. Um, but our high performance uh, data grid viewer, uh, once it can transfer 200 megabytes to the, to the browser, smooth as butter. And if this is too small for you, the actual data grid component can handle, there's an example out there where it can handle a trillion rows and a trillion columns, still smooth as butter scrolling through your data. But JupyterLab is more than just a collection of tools here. It's also about being extensible. Um, I've, last year at SciPy, uh, someone came up to us and said, we'd love to see a FASTA viewer, a FASTA file viewer. And so it took us a few minutes, uh, maybe an hour or so, to wrap up uh, a JavaScript viewer for a FASTA file and just a couple of dozen lines of code. And now you can view FASTA files, not just as files, but you can also view them in the notebook. A couple dozen lines of code enables us to deal with a new file format, either as a file or in the notebook. Um, in fact, if you look at JupyterLab, here is JupyterLab itself. I mentioned 60 components. Here is JupyterLab. It's got a console. Each one of these is a component of JupyterLab. Everything that you see here is an extension in JupyterLab, including the main menu, including the file browser, everything here. The cool thing about it is you can write your own extensions that live on the same level as the uh, extensions that come with JupyterLab. This means that you can write your own tools, your own customization of your own tools that live on the same level playing field to extend a component of JupyterLab, replace a component of JupyterLab. And this is really the genius of open source, that you can customize your own tools. And of all the things in JupyterLab, the thing I'm most excited about is to see what sort of extensions, what sort of customizations, what sort of uh, things that you guys write uh, for your workflow. Again, come to JupyterCon if you'd like to learn more about Jupyter. Uh, the other thing you can do is uh, if you just Google JupyterLab 
the first post, the first link is a blog post. Uh, that's a fantastic blog post explaining JupyterLab a little more. The second link here is the GitHub. And the third is an, some excellent user documentation that walks you through JupyterLab. So install it today. I'm excited to hear uh, what you guys have to think about it. Thank you. <laughs>